In The Mind-Gut Connection by Emerin Mayer, prepare to embark on a fascinating journey through the intricate web of interactions between your gut and brain. This captivating exploration sheds light on the vital role this connection plays in shaping both your physical and mental health. As you delve into the pages of this book, you'll uncover profound insights into the brain-gut axis, the profound influence of stress on gut health, and the profound impact of food on your mental well-being. Brace yourself for a paradigm shift as you discover the power of holistic care in transforming your overall health. Have you ever pondered why your stomach churns when anxiety strikes or why a comforting meal can uplift your spirits after a grueling day? The explanation lies within the astounding relationship between your gut and brain. Within the depths of your gut, trillions of microscopic organisms thrive, not merely aiding digestion, but engaging in a constant dialogue with your brain. They possess the ability to influence your mood, thoughts, and emotions. However, the conversation is not one-sided, for your brain also has a voice in this symphony of communication. Through the forthcoming book summary, you'll unlock the secrets of how your diet, stress levels, and even your social connections can shape this bustling micro-world residing within you. Furthermore, you'll gain valuable insights on how to enhance and restore your brain-gut communication paving the way for improved well-being in every aspect of your life. Prepare yourself for a transformative experience as you challenge your preconceptions about your gut, your brain, and the holistic nature of your health. Get ready to embark on a journey that will revolutionize the way you perceive the intricate connection between your mind and gut. Chapter 1. Unraveling the Gut Secrets Throughout the annals of history, from the earliest writings of ancient civilizations to the wisdom of renowned physicians, the human gut has held a prominent place of fascination. Ancient Egyptians entrusted a dedicated keeper of the rectum to manage enemas for the pharaoh, while ancient Babylonian and Assyrian tablets documented the use of enemas as early as 600 BC. Even Susruta, the esteemed father of Indian surgery, provided intricate details of implements used to cleanse the colon. The enduring preoccupation with the gut's condition becomes clearer when we consider the words credited to Hippocrates, all disease begins in the gut. Remarkably, Hippocrates' intuition was not far from the truth. Today, we understand that immune cells dispersed throughout the gut constitute the largest part of our immune system. What's more, the gut possesses its own intricate nervous system, often referred to as the second brain. Adding to its complexity, the gut harbors endocrine cells that produce 20 different hormones and houses the largest reservoir of serotonin in the body. These systems within the gut do not operate in isolation from the rest of the body. They communicate with the brain through the vagus nerve. Hence, when you experience a gut feeling about something, it extends beyond a mere metaphor. It signifies a literal sensation. Utilizing this intricate vagus nerve superhighway, the brain receives copious amounts of information from the gut daily, storing it as memories. While approximately 90% of this information remains below conscious awareness, it undeniably influences our behavioral responses to various stimuli. Notably, studies have revealed that 90% of the information flow occurs from gut to brain, while a mere 10% travels from brain to gut. Visualize the gut as an operative agent in the field, relaying intelligence back to headquarters. Armed with this wealth of knowledge, it is no surprise that researchers are now speculating about the gut's potential role in the development of mental and emotional conditions such as depression and anxiety. The gut-brain connection, once thought of as a mere metaphorical concept, gains scientific credibility through the discoveries of pioneers like Dr. William Beaumont. In 1822, Dr. Beaumont, an army surgeon, had a unique opportunity to witness the direct impact of emotions on digestion in a rather peculiar manner. He treated Alexis St. Martin, a man accidentally shot through the stomach with a musket. Despite successfully restoring St. Martin's digestive function, Dr. Beaumont was unable to permanently close his stomach, granting him ongoing access to observe digestion in real time. With St. Martin's consent, Dr. Beaumont conducted experiments to investigate the direct influence of emotional stimuli on digestive responses. As the experiments sometimes caused discomfort for St. Martin, he frequently became upset, allowing Dr. Beaumont to observe the effects of emotions on digestion. Fascinatingly, 
Beaumont discovered that St. Martin's anger significantly slowed down his digestion. These experiments unveiled the profound impact that emotions have on the intricate processes within our gut. Subsequent investigations delved even deeper, exploring the link between gut microbes and behavior. Scientists conducted experiments involving the transplantation of fecal microbes from one mouse into another, observing any resulting changes in behavior. Astonishingly, a timid mouse injected with the gut microbes of an extroverted mouse began exhibiting more extroverted traits. Similarly, a lean mouse injected with the microbes of an obese mouse experienced altered eating habits and gained weight. These findings open up a vast realm of speculation concerning the profound influence of gut microbes on our emotions and behaviors. They beckon us to ponder the potential future of gut-based therapies, harnessing the power of this intricate ecosystem within us. Chapter 2. Trusting Your Gut. The Power and Limitations of Intuition. In 1983, the world teetered on the edge of a potential nuclear catastrophe. Stanislav Petrov, a Soviet Air Defense Forces officer, received a chilling system alert informing him that five missiles were en route to the Soviet Union from the United States. Faced with the weighty decision of whether to retaliate and potentially escalate the conflict to a global scale, Petrov made a remarkable choice, he trusted his gut and opted not to take any action. As history would reveal, the warning turned out to be a false alarm, but at that moment, Petrov didn't possess that knowledge. He relied on his intuition, his instinctive feeling that something was amiss. When asked why he didn't alert anyone or launch retaliatory missiles, Petrov's explanation was simple, he had a gut feeling. Throughout the centuries, humanity has intuitively recognized the connection between what we eat and how we think. The character of Ebenezer Scrooge from Charles Dickens' timeless novel, A Christmas Carol, serves as an example. After encountering a ghostly vision, Scrooge attributes the experience to something he consumed that evening. These anecdotes and cultural references have long hinted at a deeper truth, one that science now illuminates, the direct connections among the brain, body, and gut. In this chapter, we delve into the intricate interplay between the gut, stress, and the brain, exploring how these relationships shape our emotions, thoughts, and behaviors. Stress, a common and often unwelcome companion in our lives, elicits physiological responses in our bodies, including our gut. When stress becomes chronic, these physiological reactions can disrupt our systems, leading to a cascade of negative effects. Remarkably, studies have shown that the impact of stress may extend beyond our own lifetimes. Research on over 54,000 children and teenagers who experienced traumatic or chronically stressful events during their youth revealed a higher likelihood of developing conditions such as heart attacks, asthma, strokes, or diabetes later in life. What's even more intriguing is the correlation between a mother's stress levels during pregnancy and the subsequent reactions of her child's nervous system to stress. Stress, it seems, can be transmitted from one generation to the next through our microbiomes. While babies in the womb do not possess their own gut microbiome, they acquire the seeds of that microbiome from the microbes in their mother's vaginas during birth. The type and quality of these microbes establish a connection between stress responses and our microbial composition. This transfer of microbes offers a potential explanation for how stress responses can become hereditary, shaping our reactions to future challenges. Returning to the notion of the gut feeling mentioned earlier, our understanding of the effects of microbes on chemical production in the body and their signaling to the brain allows us to draw intriguing inferences about the role of intuition in our decision-making processes. The gut constantly communicates with the brain, storing this information in a subconscious memory library. When we encounter various moments in life, our brain manifests reactions in the form of feelings. These feelings may align harmoniously with the events at hand, such as feeling happiness when a child runs up to greet us. However, if that same child's approach triggers panic, we must consciously override that feeling to respond appropriately. This understanding leads us to a crucial question, should we trust our gut? The answer lies in the balance between listening to our intuition and applying higher reasoning. Our brain has access to a vast reserve of wisdom accumulated within our bodies since birth. However, it is not infallible. 
Evolution has gifted us with the prefrontal cortex, the part of our brain capable of overriding ancient systems when they appear to be incorrect. So, while it is essential to heed the signals from our gut, we must also engage our critical thinking faculties. By acknowledging the power and limitations of our intuition, we can navigate the complex landscape of decision-making, using both our gut and our higher reasoning to guide us toward the most favorable outcomes. Chapter 3. The Complex Battle for Optimal Health In a startling revelation, only a mere 5% of the North American population can be classified as super-healthy, individuals who are thriving in all aspects of life, encompassing physical, emotional, spiritual, and more. When faced with the daunting reality of the odds stacked against us, it is no wonder that this number is alarmingly low. To comprehend the factors contributing to this disparity, we must first address the North American diet. Rife with animal fats, predominantly from fried and processed foods, as well as high sugar content, this diet prioritizes speed and convenience, allowing us to navigate our high stress days without pausing for proper nourishment. However, it is widely known that stress has a detrimental impact on the delicate balance of our microbiome, and the North American diet significantly contributes to lifestyle disorders and diseases such as obesity, high blood pressure, and diabetes. In fact, a substantial portion of the American population, undiagnosed with specific illnesses, resides in a pre-disease state, with all the conditions in place to eventually develop severe health complications. The apparent solution may seem straightforward, analyze the microbiomes of those individuals who embody super health and strive to replicate them universally. While microbiota transplantation has proven feasible, a crucial realization challenges this notion. Despite humans sharing approximately 90% genetic similarity, their microbiome similarity typically hovers around a mere 5%. The significance of diversity becomes apparent, leading us to conclude that optimizing our existing microbiome is key to attaining better health. Adding further complexity, scientific research has demonstrated an intriguing paradox. The very same high-fat, sugary American diet that contributes to disease and poor health has been found to reduce stress levels and alleviate depression. It appears as though we are presented with two seemingly contradictory choices, being healthy and stressed or sick and happy. To unravel the enigma behind the stress-reducing properties of these detrimental foods, let us examine the curious case of cats and rats. Cats harbor a parasite called Toxoplasma gondii, which can be found in their feces. Rats become infected when they attempt to scavenge undigested food from the feces, leading to the parasite's life cycle. However, there is more to this story. To ensure its survival, the parasite hijacks the rat's brain, inducing a sexual attraction to the smell of cat urine. The rat willingly seeks out cats, facilitating its capture and providing the parasite with an opportunity to continue its existence. Drawing upon this scientific speculation, we can consider the potential connection between our microbiome and the brain's dopamine reward system. Comfort foods, rich in fat and sugar, reward us with a temporary reduction in stress and pleasant sensations, albeit at the expense of our overall health. Some scientists propose that certain microorganisms in our gut might be exploiting our dopamine reward system to obtain the nourishment they require, at the cost of the host's well-being, us. Although this hypothesis is yet to be proven, it lies within the realm of possibility and is currently under investigation. Considering the multitude of challenges we face, including our body's conflicting responses to food, both positive and negative, the path to better health necessitates the utilization of our remarkable adaptive trait, the prefrontal cortex, granting us the power of choice. It is this conscious decision-making that will restore our bodies to a state of optimal health. Here are a few guidelines to follow. 1. Treat your body as a farm and actively nurture your microbiome. 2. Reduce consumption of fried, fatty, and processed foods. 3. Incorporate fermented foods like sauerkraut and yogurt into your diet. 4. Establish a rule to abstain from eating in response to stress, anger, or sadness. 5. If you are pregnant, prioritize proper nutrition and strive to minimize stress levels. 6. Practice regular fasting to allow your gut to rejuvenate. 7. Transform mealtime into a social occasion, 
fostering positivity through interactions with loved ones, thereby enhancing your gut's response to food. While some of these guidelines may sound familiar, it is important to recognize that there are no magical shortcuts to attaining and maintaining good health. The journey towards optimal well-being demands conscientious choices, particularly when it comes to matters of food. Armed with a deeper understanding of the intricate biological mechanisms influencing our health, we can now grasp the vital importance of adhering to these dietary principles. Summary. When considering the functioning of a human being, it becomes apparent that it resembles an ecosystem rather than a mere machine. As we delve deeper into this ecosystem and explore the countless microbes residing within it, we come to recognize the immense significance of diet in every aspect of our lives. Our physical well-being, emotional responses, and behavioral patterns are all profoundly influenced by what we consume. Furthermore, this influence is not one-sided. Emotions can also impact digestion. The microorganisms inhabiting our gut have a direct means of communication with the brain through a complex nerve system often referred to as the second brain. Understanding this connection allows us to comprehend how our dietary choices shape both our physical state and our emotional experiences, as they influence the microbial response to stimuli within our gut. Ultimately, we have discovered that the conventional wisdom regarding diet, such as the advice to avoid processed foods and share meals at the family table, is crucial for our overall health. By appreciating and nurturing the intricate relationship between our gut and brain, we can unlock the potential for enhanced well-being, happiness, and improved overall health. Now, thank you for taking the time to watch, and if you found value in this video, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel, and in case you want to buy the book, use the link in the description, trust me, you won't regret it.